Cats and kittens. Cats, cats, cats and, and kittens. Cool cats and kittens. Oh, Good well. evening, everybody. Uh, before we get into it tonight, I want to preface this by saying one thing for our more lighthearted viewers. This episode's going to get a little freaky. <laughs> we are talking about the, the new Benchmade 565-1 Freak. Um, so let's check it out. Let's look at it. Um, it'll be, be available for all you plebs on June 15th. Uh, I thought it was plebs. Oh, is it plebs? Well, uh, well here, here's the thing. It's on your accent. It, well, I only know... All right, who's going to do the unboxing? Chad is. <laughs> <laughs> on the table, you fool. I'm sorry. Well, that's, I'm sorry. The, that's the, that's the <laughs> oh. Chad trademark, on the table. <laughs> well, access tab, look at that. Fancy. Oh, shit. And this is, what's the model number? 565-1. So in true Benchmade-1 variant nature, uh, they gave you an S90 blade and a carbon. carbon fiber handle. Right, so mm -hmm. classic, the Nakamura, then you know, the Osborne. You still get and, those stylized spacers. And minimum advertised price is? Uh, it is 230 Nope. 263. Yeah! That's 263. <laughs> I noticed a bit of a change here, which yes. is the first production doesn't have a model number. Uh, model. So, yeah, um, looks like what they've been it's doing. It's not enumerated, what it yeah, used to be before. Ex exactly. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, one other change uh, most Dash ones have blue hardware. They went to red. Oh, really? They went to I red. Did not know, I did yeah. not ever put that together yeah. that most Dash ones mm -hmm. have blue hardware. I like the red. Uh, judging on the. Um, Sales performance of its big brother, yeah, which is eh, obviously different G10 carbon fiber. But uh, if you look at the sales number, this uh, I think this is gonna do well. Here, my one thing about that is, I think what a lot of people really wanted was a mini super freak, right? Mini, mini freak dash one. Well, mini, mini 560 BK dash one. Yeah, let's not let's not get them, uh, let's not yeah. uh, <laughs> get them, get them in trouble with uh. uh yeah, the, yeah. The estate of Rick James. And that's fair, but that is, you know, <laughs> the colloquial term for this guy. Yeah, of course. Um, and so what we got is something that's more in line with what they've done in the past, and I think that closes the door on what a lot of people wanted. Yeah, yeah. Which was a mini G10. Well, but this, and this, M4. but this follows this follows the trajectory of the 940 Osborne, it does. which it has does. been a solid yeah. performer for Benchmade mm -hmm. for 20 years. Yeah, that's true. So why not follow a, a proven trajectory? It is going to do well, uh, I think. It does Denver. have the split arrow, otherwise known as the penis clip, hmm. which is interesting because uh, I, we, there's so many requests for the for the low rise. Yeah, uh, but the low rise is a weaker clip. It is quite I'm, quite. Yeah, I mean, with, I mean, that's not a controversial statement. It's it's obvious. Hmm. Anyway, so we brought some other stuff to compare it to, which is uh, well. I don't know the name of this one. That's the Guru. Oh, it is the Guru. That's the guru. Okay, but it's the Guru Flipper because they also make a Guru without the, the flip. Yeah. And we brought the uh, Spider, Spider Monkey, Monkey with the carbon fiber. And is this S35? It's S35. S35. Because uh, Southern Grind is a big fan of... Um, Sandvik. Yes, Sandvik. Yeah. In fact, uh, I don't think we carry any Sandvik variations. I think we do that on purpose, don't we? Yeah, but if it were up to me, I don't like S35 either. Yeah. But I do respect the build quality of Southern Grind mm -hmm. and some of their choices. I, I do like the very stout clip. Like, if, if you're going to damage a clip, it ain't going to be that yeah, that's one. that's true. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of a little monster. So those are fairly similar if you look at them. So what did we say? This was 263. Yeah, 263. Uh, 219. 219, made in the U.S. Made in the U.S. Um, uh, and this is, what, 180, 182, made in Taiwan or made in China? Made in uh, China. Yes. Made in China. Yeah, All right. Made in China. With S35 and titanium. All right. Full, full titanium, we should say. Full titanium with a uh, steel insert lockup, titanium clip, but made overseas. So as Australian as knives go, though, they're, you know, yeah. they're nice, they're fancy. No, yeah, I mean yeah. they're coming up in the market, and they yeah. realize they, they, you know, they're, they're, you know, trying to take over, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, whatever they can. It's but. very ZT esque. Yeah, and this is it is the only one of the ones we brought out for comparison that is made in China. The rest are all uh, made true. in the U.S. In fact, well, Benchmade is obviously all made in Oregon, North Carolina. No, it's one of the Carolinas. <laughs> <laughs> It's from the Carolinas. I feel better about that. Than <laughs> so this, uh, then I'm going to guess South Carolina since it's Southern Grind. 
So, uh, I guess, like, looking at it, the original, you know, souped up freak. Does sell very well. And does sell very well. We get, get very good feedback from customers over it. You get that fantastic M4 steel, which they mm -hmm. use in all the blade competitions. But only comes coated because M4 will rust if you look at it wrong. Yeah, Benchmade is, uh, yeah, you'll, all, you'll always find it. their M4 blades coated. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, even in the Contigo, they made one look satin yeah. by coating it gray. Yeah. But obviously still coated it because M4, that's the only thing. M4 is fantastic, but like I said, it, it I mean, it rusts so easily, it's almost it ridiculous. Does. Do you want to give some props to Benchmade using S30 instead of S35? Because if I remember correctly, you said that S30 was... An unimaginable horror to work with. It, it, well, I will say, I don't have the most experience with machining steel because I we only do knives. But So I have experience machining M390, K110, D2, LMAX, um, N690... Some more, some more obscure ones. Well, I mean, but 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 almost every steel we pick is in the top ten, or well, let's say maybe N six ninety, top fifteen, top twenty of edge retention, and and bang for the buck steels. We want really good steels that you don't have to pay out the ass for. So we started in with N six ninety, but uh, S thirty we stopped using because in an annealed state it was the most difficult steel I've ever machined. So we stopped using mm -hmm. it for that reason. In fact, uh, just out of frame behind. Um, the camera here is, we have a giant sheet of S30 <laughs> that we just we just don't bother with. I mean, we'll probably use it eventually, but I'm, I'm tired of it. <laughs> I, it, it, was needs, a, it was a pain in the ass. It just eats through bits. It, it, was, it was chewing up bids. I, I, was, I, was, I was, you know, I, I, was fucking up, I was fucking up runs left and right. It just, for the performance we got out of it, it didn't seem worth the headache. So we hmm. switched over to things that were much easier to machine, and we got a much more better we got a much better end product out of. So we're at the original comes in S30. Have we, have we used S90 on anything? Mm -mm. We've used S. We've used S30 and S125. Hmm. But we've never used uh, 60, 90, or 10, 110. Hmm. Okay, interesting. And we actually still do have S125 upstairs, but it's um, well. I mean, it's everything I just described about S30 times two. <laughs> It uses well. I mean, uh, it uses so we, you know, you, we, we know how how many belts you're gonna run through. So if you take a, you know, you take Lmax, and then you cut it out, and you 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 profile it out in an annealed state, and then you use it, and then you you know you do the grinds and this and that. And we know how many belts it's gonna take to do X amount of knives. We know how many, uh, you know, we know how much time on the flattener. We know how much time this and that. If you take S125, it is. It takes eight times more expendables to make an S125 knife than it takes to make anything else we make. Uh, that's wild. So you use a, a ceramic impregnated 60 grit orange blaze belt, and you, say you use three of them, or eh, well, let's be conservative. So you say so it takes one to really bite in to make like three knives uh take that times eight to do it on s125 mm -hmm. which is why we still have a lot of it because it's such a bitch <laughs> to use we we don't bother very often and they don't make it anymore because it was beating up their machinery hmm. so i'm gonna shut up for a little bit because <laughs> i've been sure. talking a lot i like the knife <laughs> <laughs> i see they added some more contours to the uh, g10 for the carbon fiber, they added contours to it that weren't there before in the original design. This is very Osborne. It's mm -hmm. very much so. Yeah, the 940-1 is is very similar to that. The correct choice. <laughs> so I, I know I already mentioned it, but just to like come back to it, I really I know this is like a tried and true way for them to go, but I feel like they did miss the mark a little bit. This should have been like a dash two or something similar because it really does close the door on a mini version of this. I know it's. You know, it's newer, but this is 263. This is 191. Imagine a, a mini uh, freak with M4 and G10. Do you, would you be like at 160 ish? Exactly. And that would absolutely crush. That would crush. Yeah, yeah that would. That, well, you know what that would do? Is that would cannibalize the fuck out of the bailout. Uh, that would actually. It's yeah, stepping, that's true. It's stepping that right into that arena. That. Yeah, that would absolutely do that. That's true. So what you're saying is it's it's a cool knife and you're happy it exists, but you're kind of confused why it exists in its current configuration. Well, after Mike pointed that out, that's exactly why it exists in its well, current configuration. You know what? Uh, the only thing the only thing that uh, I wonder about this knife is, 
I, I, the satin blade I get. I think they should have blacked the liners. Yeah. So they kind yeah. of disappear a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They would just blend into that carbon fiber, and you'd have that nice, shiny satin blade poking out, and everything else would kind of blend in as a single. Because when I pick this up, I mean, it's almost impossible to not notice these liners just poking out. And it yeah. it red like they got on this one. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's why they did this in red in the first place. Yeah. It's just because of this. Yeah, to kind of tie it into the family. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Like, it's it's a nice knife. I like that they added the indents there because your hand nicely rests on it. So if you're, like, left-handed and you put the clip on the other side, your hand rests nicely there. And that's nice on a smaller knife. Mm. Well, that that would be a um, – that's kind of – that's give, just giving um, kudos to Warren Osborne. Yeah. Because that's very yeah. obviously yeah. – Something he does. I mean, uh -huh. he did it on the uh, proxy. He did. He yeah. did it. He does it on. The, uh, he did it on the Contigo. Yeah, gosh, uh, he did the it on the rift. Osborne. Yeah, he did it on yeah. the Rift too. Yeah. There's always that high line in the middle with the with the dig out on the side. That sides. really is his style. Yeah, that's it's very it, much. It's something a good he did. design as it, not necessarily just an aesthetic. It's a good design language yeah. because it it adds usability well, to it. There's and a, the larger knife has something similar, but it's it's got that textured G G10, which is a lot grippier. You can't really see it, but it's got striations along it, so your hand won't slip on it. And it's a bigger knife, so you don't have those same issues. It's nice that they added that on the smaller one, so you don't just flip it out of your hand or cut yourself. Well, and comparatively, like, um, I mean, the Freak has a, a very similar kind of uh, the striations where you just take the take the ball end mill and just run it across the blast past the CNC. Uh, in sharp contrast is the Spider Monkey, which has nothing of the sort. No. It's very smooth, yeah. but I think it's almost aimed a little bit more gentlemanly, I wonder. I would think so. You do have just that one little, um, you know, defining pocket right there, though, that yeah. does let you get a pretty good grip on it if you need to. Well, and two, something I'm just now noticing is these liners are beefy as shit. Well, that's true. Look how good thin, <laughs> thin the liners are here and how thick they are here. I mean, uh, you're looking at, you know, you take this times 150%, you end up with those liners. Was well, that an access lock versus liner lock? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I wonder if, oh, Beefier liners, beefier lock. Because it has to be, mm -hmm. yeah, though. That's, yeah, that's liners, just that, yeah. Lock. Well, and also, beefier liners, the less less carbon fiber you have to yeah, you use, use. less material. Which is actually, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit cheaper. <laughs> but I, I noticed that the spider monkey, as you get to the ass end, uh, it starts with the cusping. Hmm. Where you bring, mm -hmm. that's all this is called, is cusping. So you bring a, a ball end mill through, and it runs across the substrate. And it leaves, you know, if it's ball end, it leaves these little peaks and valleys. Yeah. And the spider monkey does have it across the ass end, which is, which would make sense because it's smooth here, but you got a finger lock, and then it's rough here where you don't have a finger lock. And you get a nice, you get a really nice purchase. Well, I mean, it's also a semi deep carry knife, so you have in your pocket, you can feel it here, so you can grasp it easily. I didn't think of that. That's pull it idea. out, and then and it would make it stick a little better in your yeah. pocket with the. Uh, and then your hand naturally finds the lock and throws it open. You know, it's it's. About, about the tactility of the knife. Yes. Okay. We need to start you a uh, Urban Dictionary uh, <laughs> definition of tactility. That's a real word, tactility. man. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I do actually, the more I play with this, we've had it in the shop for a couple of weeks, um, I I do actually surprisingly like it, but if, mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm picking on paper... No, you're picking on, if you're looking at a spec sheet... Yeah. Well, but you're also spending another 70 some odd dollars uh, uh, to go here than here? 50. You, is it? I don't know. A little less than 50, I think. <laughs> okay, so 219 and 263. Yeah. All right, so yeah, you're looking 40, 40 some odd dollars. But you're also going up to S90? S90, yeah. You're going from S90 to S35, which. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't, oh, I don't know that we actually have regular viewers, but anybody that sees this knows that I uh, have this unnatural <laughs> hatred for S35. No, I. Uh, <laughs> I need glasses because I thought this was S30 oh, over yeah. here. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah. These are brand new contacts, and I can't fucking. I'm nearsighted, <laughs> um, but like I'm looking at them like, oh, it's S30. Why is it so much more expensive than I see? Mm. Oh, it's S90. Mm -hmm. Never mind. This makes perfect sense because you get the same. Almost the same kind of hard use as that, but now it's fucking stainless. You don't yeah, have to worry yeah. about washing it off. You don't have to worry about it if you're mm. out fishing. 
Salt water fishing. It's very, some lime. it's very use it and forget it kind of stuff. Use it and forget it, which, which that's huge. I do like that. But who's buying a two hundred and sixty dollar knife and using it and forgetting it? Every single six pack license. I don't know. Yeah, I, think, me, I, guess, I think I think Lori. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there for a couple. Uh, well, I mean, there. Yeah. Henry's in the parking lot. Well, it, it, Planet uh, Fitness. Something I noticed uh, when I first moved up to Alaska, and Alaska is um, never judge. It, like book by its cover kind of thing. They, I mean, those guys come in with just, I mean, fucking, they haven't taken a shower in six days and they're fucking, they're wearing extra tufts and everything and they'll drop $1,200 like it's nothing. That is true. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you, you never do that. So, so and they, but all they want is they want a tool that performs specifically for their task because they want it and I have the money and I don't give a fuck. And out of all of these, better not that's that me. knife. That is. Because yeah. even if you go this, this has probably got better edge retention because M4 is the poop. I mean, we can all agree. Yeah. But this is much more carefree. Who gives a shit? Cut a line, cut the head off a fish, run a, run a gut line, throw it in your fucking waders and forget about it. And then at the end of the day, you fucking hit it under the sink and wash it all out, shake it, throw it down, and done. You're fine. Mm-hmm. And you're done. And you don't have to worry about it. And it's S90, and you don't—you have to sharpen it every three months. I mean, if you're, you're cutting fish, or I mean, even if you're skinning out with this, as long as you're not hitting bone, S90 performs very well. I mean, you can go through four or five animals. Well, they better be small, so you can go four or five. <laughs> you can go through four or five whitetail, <laughs> and as long as you're not fucking scraping bone, you don't even have to worry about this thing. Blacktail, no problem. Oh yeah, sick of deer? Yeah. Oh my god, you'd probably go through fucking twelve sick of deer with that.